Okay, uh, but I mean, it just, and I like, I, I like the way it, I just feel like it involves me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a day that the Lord has made that we can rejoice and be glad in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. We rejoice to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I hope everyone came with expecting hearts for God to do his usual great and mighty things, right? He's faithful. He is so faithful. And all our friends on, on Facebook, we say good morning to you. And those that will view later on in the week, we just play blessings on you as you receive the word and worship with us too. Oh, this morning, I'm kind of standing in for Pastor Kim. She's not feeling real well, so if you all remember to pray for her, you know, can't keep a good woman down. God is faithful. Amen. And also, we need to pray for Carol Kalinda for healing. Amen. We need to pray for, for Clarence Ramey for healing. And we need to pray for Sherry. I'm like a light. You know, um, she's lost her husband, and we just ask for prayer. God's arms are wrapped tightly around her and hold her and encourage her through this difficult time. And anyone else, if you've got God's laid something on your heart, can you just raise your hand and let us know God knows what the needs are. And all the ones we've been praying for, we just, ex we just bring these forth and we just pray for it and we expect answers to come, right? We, and we love to hear and we love to hear the praise reports when God answers. We like to hear that. It really. So if you'll join us in prayer this morning and then we'll do the scripture and... And we'll get into worship, Hallelujah. our faithful God, okay? Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that we can come into your house. We can gather together in your name. Yes, we thank you that your presence is here with us. And we choose to worship you this morning, give you all the glory and praise that you're worthy of. I thank you that you are a faithful God. And I thank you that we can bring these needs before you, Lord God, and expect and know that you're true to your promise. And we think answers will come and blessings will come. And we thank you for that, Lord God. And we just have that expectancy that we're going to hear good reports in Jesus' name. I thank you for the word that will come forth in this house today. I thank you that our hearts will be ready to receive. And, Father, when we leave this place, we'll leave here not as we came, but we'll leave changed and better because of you and your word and your faith. I thank you for that, God. We just love you, Lord. We love you. And we're excited, God. We're excited to be in your house and see all that you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to read the scripture this morning. I got it back there, Kim. Okay, Psalm 111, verses 9 and 10. It says, he has sent redemption to his people. Yes. He has commanded his covenant forever Amen. holy and awesome yes. is yes. his name yes. yes the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom yes. Help us, lord. a good understanding have all those who do who do his commandments his praise endures forever yes forever yes. and Hallelujah. You, and we're going to enter that Lord. place of praise this Hallelujah. morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
When all I see is a battle, you see the victory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. When all I see is a mountain, you see the mountain move. As I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. When I fight, I'll fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you, and every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is a cross, God, you see the empty tomb. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet now sing through the night. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. Yes, so when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high, oh God, that belongs to you. And every tear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night, oh God, that belongs to you. Oh God, that belongs to you. Oh God, that belongs to you. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, it does, Lord. And we worship you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. We're going to make a little change here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. How many of you have had some great stuff happen in your life this week? Anybody? Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I have. I really have. God has really ministered and done special stuff, and that's just what he wants to do. Hallelujah. And you know what? One of the things we can always say is that he's never failed us, has he? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands. Moment that I wake up until I lay my head, for I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, thank you, Jesus. And all my life you have been so, so. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Come on. All my life you have been faithful. Yes, you have, Lord. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, running after me. 
Your goodness is running after, running after me. When my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, running after me. Yes, Lord. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. Give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, running after me. Thank you, Lord. Cause all my life you have been faithful. Has he been faithful to you? All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing that again, all my life. All my life you have been faithful. Sing it out, sing it to us. You have been so, so good. Yes. Every breath that I am able, Lord, I will see of the goodness, goodness of God. Yes, I will see, I will see of the goodness, goodness of God. I'm going to keep on singing, I will see. Of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Lord. We Hallelujah. So good. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire. Time after time, I'm born of His Spirit, washed in His blood, and what He did for me on Calvary is more than enough. Thank you, Lord, because I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never fail, he will never fail. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior, the one. Submission and all is at rest. I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps. Yes, Lord. So this is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my risen King and Savior all the day long. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, yes, my Savior is the one, hallelujah, who will never fail, he'll never Well, 
I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust in God. My Savior, He's the one Hallelujah. who will never go fail. He'll never fail. Oh, I trust in God. Oh, He's my Savior. He's the one. the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered that's why I trust him that's why I trust him I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered that's why i trust him that's why i trust in god my savior the one who will never fail he'll never fail i trust in god my savior the one who will never fail you never fail I trust in God Always, hallelujah do you trust in day. him today Thank hallelujah you. never failing never failing everything else can wait I've come to seek your face So everything else can wait I'm here for you Lord, I want to Just be here at your feet Just be, Lord, here on my knees Here in your presence, Lord, I am complete. Jesus, you're all that I need. Yes, Everything else can wait. I've come to see your face. Everything else can wait. I'm here for you, Lord, I want to just be here at your feet, just be here on my knees, here in your presence, I am complete, Lord Jesus, you're all that I need. There's nothing I want more Cause nothing matters more There's nothing I want more Nothing matters more Just to be here at your feet, Lord Just, just be here on my knees Here in your presence I am complete Jesus, you're all that I need Just be, 
just be here at your feet. Just be here on my knees. Thank you, Lord. Here in your presence, Lord, I am complete. Jesus, you're all that I need. Jesus, you're, you're all, all that I need. One more time, just tell me that. Jesus, you're, you're all, all that, that I need. need. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I yes, need Lord. nothing more. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do, Lord I just, just want you. you Oh, Lord, I'm sorry When I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry, Lord I just sang another song Take me back to where we started Open up my heart to you Oh, I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry When I forgot that you're enough Take me back to where we started Open up my heart to you I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment Never want to leave Lord, I'm not here for blessing Jesus, you don't owe me anything Oh, more than anything that you can do Lord, just want you Yes, Lord I just want you, Lord. There's nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else we will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else we'll do. Lord, I just want you. Yes, I do, Lord. Nothing else. Lord, there's nothing, nothing else, nothing, nothing else we will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else we'll do. I just want you. Tell him, nothing else, Lord, nothing else, nothing else we'll do. Today, Lord. I just, just want you, Lord, because nothing, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else we will do. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up. Holy thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I never want to leave. Stay in your presence, Lord. Oh, I'm not here, here for blessings. blessings. 
Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Yes, yes Lord. Just want you. Thank you, Jesus. Just want you. I saw the Lord seated on his throne. He was clothed in glory, exalted high, and the train of his robe. Oh, yes, and the angels circled around him, oh, and cried, you are holy, oh, so, oh, yes, you are, Lord. Tell the Lord this morning, share with him your heart. My heart and soul with praises and sing. For my eyes have seen the Holy King. Stand clean by the altar's call. Oh, cleanse us today, Lord. I bless the Lord, oh, my soul. You Something right, just close your eyes and imagine 
The prophet Isaiah had a vision when he wrote this portion of Scripture. And he was standing there, I'm sure, in worship just like we are today. But he said, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. And his train filled the entire temple. And, and all the angels were just spinning around that place. Yes. And they were crying, holy, holy, holy. And I just want you to imagine today that, and I believe it's true, that right now it's no different. And we are in his presence and if you will just let God just help you and open up those spiritual eyes and look, look toward heaven and, and just imagine, oh, God, the holy king. Oh, just and just imagine he's here in this place and, and the, his entire robe is filling this temple. His presence is just being poured out just like it was upon Isaiah. And, and, and he said he just fell as, as a dead man because he just didn't feel like he could stand in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. And that's whose presence we are before today. Yes, so if we can imagine, if we can get that vision that, uh, that Isaiah got, I think it would change our entire church services every time. Hallelujah. We would come in and we would just bow as soon as we came in saying, Lord, I'm in your presence. I'm in your presence because there's a corporate group of people here and we're and, we're, and you're right here in the middle Lord I'm in your presence. I'm in your presence. I see you high and lifted up. Your train is filling this entire temple. Oh, and just allow that same God is reaching out to me and to you in this house today. So open up and say, God, I need you, just like we sung before. Nothing else, nothing. I don't want it. I want you, Lord. That's what I want today. I want to just be in your presence, just to sit at your feet, and just, just to receive from you as your presence floods over me. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Lord, you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. And Omega, we worship you, our God. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the
We bow down yes. and worship Yahweh. We bow down and worship Yahweh. Yes, we do. Yahweh. 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 that you're changing, Lord, right yes, now. God. Lord, I thank you for the things that you're doing right now, not only in this building, but, Lord, throughout, Lord God, is in homes, Lord God, around. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence. Yes. Praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you're great. Thank you. Worthy are you, Lord. Thank you, thank Worthy you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Worthy are you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As Michelle was going over the prayer request, there were many that I had shared with her, and some they had, and some that you've had. And we, we are needy people constantly battling something. The scriptures talk about those. And even Paul says, I left Timothy at home sick. And you think, well, why did Paul leave anyone sick? He was, a, he was one of the apostles. And I say to you today that these things come. Even the blind man, Christ said, told the disciples, this one was blind from birth for the glory of God. I don't understand all things. I share with you today that God knows the beginning from the end. We're just saying Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning of everything that you and I are. He's the ending of it. If we follow Him, listen to Him, and not lean to our understanding, God is leading us. He's leading us. All our ways, not just acknowledge, but submit to Him. That we make ourselves available. I'm here, Lord. What is it you need me to do? I just didn't recognize you and nod to you and smile. I I said, what would you have me do? Use me, Lord. From the beginning of my life to the end of my life, use me, Lord. We thank you now, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Feel your people today with knowing every day is a gift of God and that they can use that and share that with others. Let us not be self-centered and selfish in the things that we do for just ourselves, but let us hear the voice of God and, and share and, and hallelujah, give to others. Thank you, Lord. 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 Fill our hearts, Lord, with your presence, your presence, your anointing. 
your Shekinah glory. Fill us, Lord, to overflowing. Fill us, Lord, I pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wait on the Lord for just a moment. Some of you are sitting out there. You're saying, well, I don't know what to do. Ask the Lord right now. Those of you at home, you're part of the service. Ask the Lord. Lord, I, is there something I'm supposed to text? Is there something I'm supposed to send in? We've never done it that way, never received that. Someone at home may have a message for us, a word of wisdom this morning. Some of you here in the congregation say, well, I'm afraid of that. God said he's not the spirit of fear. He hasn't given it to us, but of love and a sound mind and his peace that surpasses all understanding. He's giving us all of those strengths and things that we can go forward. But he didn't give us any fear. Don't be afraid. Let the Lord use you today. Send us a text. I've never received that. That would be something new. That would be something new. Send us a text today. Hallelujah. Those that are in congregation, you say, well, I've never stepped out like that. If you do, please step out, find a microphone. Ashley may have one back there. Or you come up here and we'll get one of these to you. Just, just let us record it this morning, if you would. Let us put it out. Send it out to all of those who would listen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We wait on you, Lord. We wait on you. I love you. I love you. I long to be all that I can be in you. Hallelujah. Open your hearts today. Open your lives today. Allow me to make you into the full destiny that I have for you, that you can affect the world today. Today, I want you to know my love. I want you to know it today. I want you to embrace it today. And I want you to know that in the midst of that pain, and in the midst of that uncertainty, and in the midst of all of those things where you felt that you've come to that place to where nobody cares, nobody loves me. I love you, says the Lord. I love you. Lord, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you all so much this morning. Let's just stay in this attitude of worship. Don't don't change. Those of you who'd like to sit down and stand up, that's fine. We're just we're not, I'm not going into my sermon yet. There, I think the Lord's got something else for us this morning. Hallelujah. Wait on him and listen for his voice this morning. Let him speak to you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I'm going to ask a favor of you. Johnny, if you go down, if you would orchestrate this for me. I want you to gather around George and Lisa. Just stay seated if y'all would. And I want y'all to put their, your hands on them and I want you to pray over them. God is going to do a mighty work out of things that didn't look mighty, out of things that could have been a different story. But God, just that simple, but God has changed things. And today we're going to pray over them. And I ask Johnny that you would lead that this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I know you can't see it on camera. I'll kind of stay down this way and praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Break down every wall. Hallelujah. They would see victory, Lord. Complete victory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Standing on the other side, and then they would walk through those things, Father. They would walk through those things, Father. And Lord God, I thank you that, Father God, the anointing will begin to break out. Lord, in every direction, you, Father, you, that, Lord God, the things that they thought they could never do, Lord God, they're going to do Hallelujah. more Hallelujah. than. Hallelujah. They're going to do more Hallelujah. than, Father. So, Father God, I pray right now that, Lord God, you would take and begin Justin, to, Justin. in George, right now, Father, that, yes, Lord, Lord, that yes, the Lord. enemy would yes, try Lord. to come yes, against Lord. him at times. Hallelujah. Lord, maybe Hallelujah. sometimes in the dark times Hallelujah. and say, no, Hallelujah. God Hallelujah. can't use Build you. Build a hedge no. around him, Lord. But, Hallelujah. Lord, you're telling him today Lord, that, yes, him. yes, God Lisa. has a Hallelujah. purpose. Their yes, family, God is Lord, going you'd save to do that whole it family in Jesus' in name. And in your oh, mother. Hallelujah, that their family would come and join them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're going to touch people in ways that you never thought possible. Glory to God. Because God has a purpose for you. Hallelujah. And God is bringing you Hallelujah. Now Hallelujah. All Hallelujah. For you. Hallelujah. Right now, Lord, I pray Hallelujah. that you would touch them. And Lord, meet every need they have oh, spiritually, praise you, Lord. physically, praise mentally, you. Praise emotionally, you, Lord. financially, praise Father. You, Lord. That all of those things praise and all of those you. needs will be met, Father, in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. Continually, Father. Yes. And we thank you and we praise you for it, Lord. Glory to your name. We thank you, Lord name. God, that words, Glory. words of truth. Lord God, words of your love are going to begin to come out of them, Lord God, and touch the lives of people. Hallelujah. Make the way clear, Father, as they begin to look. But, but look, George, Lord. keep looking. Praise you, Lord. Keep looking forward. Just look. Praise expecting. you, Lord. Thank Every you. time you go around Thank the corner, you, Lord. expect Thank you, Lord. to see Thank what God you, has for you around that corner. Thank expect, you, Lord. Expect, expect. Hallelujah. He is bringing oh, you forward. Oh, bring that you. family, Lord. Oh, that whole family. Bring yes, them, the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Their the neighbors, their Jesus. friends, their cousins, Lord, their aunts and uncles, their family, moms Father. and dads and brothers. Lord God, sisters. everyone, Hallelujah. Father, the ones that are on Hallelujah. their heart, Father, their family Hallelujah. members, Hallelujah. that, Lord, they're burdened for. Praise Father God, you, we pray right now. Praise Even you, right now, this very Praise moment, you, you'll begin to, to be speaking to those people within their families. And Lord God begin to draw oh, them, Lord God, to come. We thank Lord God, you, Lord, they will that, have the joy of leading out, their family members to you, Father. Over. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then it'll be an entire Hallelujah. family going forth, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we thank you and we praise Hallelujah. you for it, Lord. Thank you have Lord. a plan thank and you have Lord. a purpose. Thank and Lord you, God, now they're thank walking you, in it, Lord. And thank we thank you, you for it as you protect them. Yes. Lord God, cover them with your yes, anointing hedge, and your favor, Lord, Father, in the name hallelujah. of Jesus, them, and your provision like in every way, Lord, oh, in the name of Jesus. Of that, that, Lord, salvation, Lord, Lord, that, that cone of love, thank you, hallelujah. Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, praise you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Yes, he's here. He wants to hear from every one of us. He wants your hearts to be devoted, to be submissive, and be hungry for him. As we hungry for food, we hungry for the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, because he is the one that's going to give us the, the power, the authority, yes. and the wisdom and the knowledge that we need to conquer whatever is trying to hinder us from completing the, the race. Yes, yes. And he wants us to continue to grow stronger together. We cannot be separated. We have to come Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because there's strength in many. And as we come and be united, one mind, one heart, one spirit. Yes. He will magnify, magnify himself in our lives. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Repent, be saved, and be filled. Hallelujah. Repent, be saved, and be filled. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let us repent, Lord. Let us be saved. Let us be filled to overflowing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 
Lord, we, we kneel before you. Sometimes we, we stand as we say those words, but in our soul we're bowing down to you. Hallelujah. Lord, we kneel before you. We humble ourselves before you. For without, without your forgiveness, there is no salvation. Hallelujah. Without that, there is no being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is none like you, Lord. So let us repent, let us be saved, and let us be filled overflowing with the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All my life, you've been faithful, Lord. All my life. I haven't been faithful all my life, but you've been faithful all my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, there is none holy as the Lord. There is none besides thee. Yes, Lord. And neither is there any rock, oh, like our God. Oh, there is none as holy as the Lord. Once again, oh, there is none holy as the Lord. There is none besides thee, and neither is there any rock, oh, like our God. There is none holy as the Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, every need, every need be met. Every heart be touched. Every lonely spirit, Lord, would, would leave and the joy of the Lord would replace it and the joy would become their strength, whoever they are today here in the sanctuary or those that are outside, that the victory of the Holy Spirit would rise up and they would be made complete. Lacking in nothing through the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we need you like we never have. Oh, we need you like we never have, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Even this week, Lord, we see the things that are happening. We see the things, whether it's in the political arena of the United States or the opening uh, performances for the, the Olympics, Lord, whatever it may be, and the things that we see today, and, and the hand of darkness. But Lord, greater are you, hallelujah. It doesn't matter what darkness comes before us, or on the television, or through the media that we look at. Whatever it is, you're greater than, you're more than, always and more than enough. You're sufficient, Lord, for our, our needs of our life, to be overcomers. Hallelujah, and not fall to, the, to those things that would try to wave over us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Lord. We don't look to those things. Hallelujah. We don't look to how we can fix them or change them or chase after them. We rebuke them in the name of Jesus and they have no authority. Hallelujah over our children or our children's children or us today. Hallelujah. For there is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. If you're feeling down today or weak or lonely or there's a problem or, or there's a need in your life, I just feel the need today that God is going to heal. God is going to touch. God is going to raise up. And where we see death or the things of that or the marks of that, we rebuke it in Jesus' name. And we praise you, Lord, that you would work your will and raise them all up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I think back on last week. Oh, hallelujah, with Daniel and the king. After all of these things take place, Daniel comes and, and he shares with the king. I didn't elaborate on this part last week, but I'm so taken by it that the world today, that the kings of this earth, that they would see through the power of the of prophetic message, through the power of in, the... In, having the feeling within you that you know what God is saying and that you bring it out in a message of wisdom or prophetic word. Hallelujah. Even Paul said, I know about tongues and all of those things and there's an outline for how to use it in the church. But he said it was better that you prophesy than it was that you speak in tongues. And I tell you today that the word is true. Not that you're trying to make a prophet, prophetic message about something that you're trying to draw attention to yourself. But if God says it to you, it will be coming true. You won't have to walk in fear of it not being the truth. You know it was from His heart and He spoke it to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us walk today not in ourself. Let us walk today and the power and the authority of who He is. Thank you, Lord, that you have redeemed us, Lord. You've washed us. And except for your redemption and your washing and the righteousness that you give, it's nothing that we can boast in ourselves. It's all from you. And we thank you, Lord. Let us know how to walk humbly before you, Lord. Teach us. I thank you for that that you're doing. And I thank you, Lord, just as that story I was just mentioning from last week. That Daniel said, give me some time, king. Let me seek my God. Are we seeking God? It says that we would even turn from our wicked ways. That you would heal our lands. Let us seek you, Lord. Let us take time and go pray about every situation. Every situation. Find the heart of God. And we might walk in revelation and not our opinions. Help us, Lord, to share wisdom with your people. There's none holy as you, Lord. There's none. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But the king said, Truly, surely, your God is the God above all gods. And there's gods out there right now that they're being set up. They're being worshipped in their own way. We saw a lot of that in the opening for the Olympics. I don't point you there to go search that out or look at that. There's darkness in the town where you live. There may be darkness in the neighborhood that you live. But God is sufficient. We need to take time, disconnect, pray, ask Him to help us be the resolve through prayer and intercession of that item, whatever that item is. The king or the kings or the neighbors or your family would have confidence in you through Christ Jesus. Not in yourself, but because you, they know you're following in a humble way the love of God. His Word, His words to your heart that He fills you with. Hallelujah. In Daniel 2 and verse 28 is where that was at. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. And He has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed were these, and Daniel shared the vision. Not, not having a clue 
what subject matter to even go to. But God put him on the right track, gave him the revelation, gave him the dream that he had also given to the king. When someone comes to you and they share with you, many times it's in love and such as that, sometimes you need the re, uh, somebody to come and, and confirm what God has already said to you. Johnny might come, or, or John back here, or Sue, or Kim, or somebody in the church, Rick, somebody, somebody might come here and share with you the vision that God gave to them. And you might just raise your hand as they're talking and saying, thank you. It's not that God didn't, thinks more of them than He does you, but if you'll stop for just a moment, you'll probably understand that God has given it to you but he also gave it to somebody else. He wanted to build you up. He wanted to raise you up. So when somebody comes to you with a word of knowledge or a prophetic message about you, you say, well, God, why didn't you tell me? He's probably said, well, I did several times, but you turned a deaf ear to me and you didn't hear me. I was showing it to you and the things that happened and, and through the day that you just kind of pass them off. I'm now reminding you of it. Don't you remember? And it's not that somebody you say to the Lord that I can't believe you gave them a message about me and you didn't tell me. I believe sometimes we turn a deaf ear to when the Lord is speaking. Let us not, Lord. Let us walk in a way that the world knows that there is a God in heaven. Kim, it's good to see you up. <laughs> she hadn't been out uh, yesterday all day and this morning. Glad you could make it. I, I thought this morning, what, if I was going to do the announcements, I would say something to the effect of uh, uh, that my better half isn't here. And I, I would say that with great respect, that, that she is the better half of who we are as a whole. <laughs> And I appreciate her and I miss her so much and when she's not here, especially when she's not feeling well. I'm going to ask a question. I don't need you to raise your hand. Those at home, I'm going to ask a question. You can answer it to yourself. Have you ever given a message in prophetic view, overview? You answer it to yourself. Those at home, answer it to yourself. If you haven't, and you're professing Christianity, I ask, why not? It's not to put you on the spot. It's not to belittle you, but to teach you and bring you to a place that when God speaks to you, and then He will confirm His Word to you through several other witnesses, and they'll come to you and maybe in, and they'll do that very thing and in prayer and they'll they'll confirm something you already knew. I've told you the story of how when Kim and I were in one of the churches, I was a praise and worship leader and and uh, stepped in every now and then when the pastor was gone and I would preach in this congregation and, and and it was interesting that they had a visitor came and he was talking about some things in Tampa and how they were honoring pastors and everything. And he was like down here, and we stopped in between. It was just a five-minute kind of thing. And, and the, the young lady that was helping me do music at the time, and she was over, on, I think, on my right side. I usually put people on my right side because my guitar, when I'm playing it, the neck of it sticks out. So most of the time, they're on my right. I believe she was on my right. Anyway, when that happened, that, that man turned around in the middle, and I didn't know him. And he looked at me, and he pointed at me, and he said, and you're going to be a pastor also. After church, I asked him, I says, why did you say that? He says, hey, if, hey, if I was wrong, I, I apologize. And he started, he started doing the, the thing that most of us would do. And, and I told him, I put my hand on his shoulder, and, and uh, I told him, I said, you're right about what you said. It was just a confirmation to me of what I was supposed to do, and it's one of the reasons I'm here now. God confirmed his prophetic word. I already knew it in my heart. But I wasn't walking in it. I won't go into that part of it. But I'm here today, and as part of that confirmation, even after some really traumatic events in my life, God was able to take me step by step 
and to walk me through that that I needed to do to be here today. So because of that, he's no respecter of persons. And you might feel something in your heart. You say, well, I'm kind of a layman. I'm new about this. But I really, this word is like, it's like it's just circling in my head. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. And you know it. And, and, and you might go over there and say, Albert, I don't know. The Lord said to me that I'm, I, I want to make myself available to you. I just feel like that you might need some help with something or, or whatever the Lord may say. And you might carry something or do something. Or this person that you've been seeing regularly in a certain part of a parking lot with a sign, you might take them by a jacket or, or take them by something to eat. And, and I encourage you to print up some little things that you would have that would be, say, I just really felt God move on my heart. And you put that little note in that bag, put them in the glove box, put them in the console, put them wherever you need to and, and carry them with you. That when you put that in there, that God spoke to me and not be afraid to say that the God of heaven would speak to you. You're not a miserable worm as some of the songs that we learned years ago. You're, you're a child of God. You're a joint heir with Jesus. He's your brother. God is your heavenly father. And just like this, and that king came to that same moment and said, Truly, your God is the God of all gods. Step out. Do those little things. Put some little bags together with a toothbrush and personal items in there, a bar of soap and a, and a new washcloth, and, and just have two or three of them in your car. Maybe, maybe the ladies or some of our ministry, you might feel led today as I say this, to go in and start putting some of those together. Put them out here that somebody can take a couple of them with them. That they would be available. Ministry is open to all of us. You're all able ministers. How you minister may not be on the stage. It may not be in the pulpit. It may not be on the grounds and helping and cleaning. There's other things that you can do. Don't say that I don't have anything that I can do. Let God, let His Word, let His wisdom, let that prophetic message that you feel rising up within you, let it step forth. I can only do so much, but the ministry, the growth of the ministry sits with you you. I'll minister, I'll preach, I'll share the word, I'll help them every way I can, but I pray today that you would recognize your field of ministry. Hallelujah. I wonder where that came from. Uh, praise you, Lord. The only scripture I've shared is, but there is a God in heaven. It's Daniel 2 and 28 that reveals secrets. And so today, if you haven't stepped out in that to confirm something that God's saying to you about someone. Don't be afraid of it. Don't go over there in an in a, uh, arrogant attitude and say, God spoke to me and I'm supposed to tell you something. <laughs> go over there with love in your eyes, softness in your voice, and it's difficult for me. Most of you know that. But to soften your voice as best you can and say, you know, the Lord's been dealing with me that I might share something with you and tell you that He's going to do something about the situation you're in. I heard Him tell me, and I know He's probably already told you. And I'm just confirming, I feel like what God's already said in your heart. And you can break down a stone wall with just following through what God said to you. A prophetic message. I'll say something to you. You can judge it later. Time will prove or disprove what I'm about to say to you. You say, well, what's in you, Pastor? What I see right now, most of our politics is like a, 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 a rule book, textbook that's been written. And, and if it goes this way, here's the strategy. And they work out of a book of strategy for politics anymore. I do believe that the whole thing with uh, the, our standing president, Biden, right now, you want to hear something prophetic. This is what I feel in my spirit. That he went to this point, adamant, I'm not stepping down. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Then all of a sudden, it moves into Kamala Harris's now. But listen careful to me. If you're playing basketball or you're playing a sport, and a lot of that that you do is strategy. I do believe there's another person yet to come into that scene. I'm not sure exactly who it is. I could name some people that I think may come. I think that 
the strategy of letting it go to the point that it did and then coming in with the vice president at that point, there's another person yet when the rally comes for the DNC that you'll find out about. That's what I feel in my heart. That's what I feel in my spirit. I don't have any idea that that's going to... I, I, I just put myself out at the mercy of, of circumstances and time. We'll see. But like a strategist, and like that that you feel, God is ministering to you about something. It may be your neighbor that you're trying to figure out and pray and ask God, and you keep putting it off as to how to speak to him or her, to be able to share something with them because you're concerned for the eternity of their soul. I'm asking you today to step out on what God's already said to you. Not in arrogance, but in a loving way. Share that message. So I would ask, in a sense, have you ever spoken a word of prophecy? Do you know the difference in the word of knowledge and a prophecy? Do you know the difference in speaking in tongues and when you're praying in tongues or how it applies? The scripture is very clear, but the church today is not receiving a lot of teaching on that. I'm hearing a lot of some of the mega churches and some of the things that are there. I'm okay, you're okay. God loves us all. We're all on the same path. I tell you, no. Wide is that path. Narrow is the path that leads to heaven. Christ himself shared with them that many find that wide path, but very few find the narrow path. So I say to you today that as the Lord ministers to you, just like Daniel, we know that Daniel went through multiple things. It, he was about to lose his life, and so were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were all about to lose their life, and because of this, they were, that's because they were prophets. Part of the soothsayers, the magicians, and prophets that were of the secular world of that day. I used I use the word this morning with Johnny Cosmopolitan. <laughs> you may, I used to have a magazine that came out about Cosmopolitan. In other words, this is, this is the, the fad, this is the latest, this is the new thing. And that they were Cosmopolitan. I say to you today that God is calling you out of the ho-hum every day. And as you start to walk in that that I'm sharing with you right now, you're going to be smiling at the end of every day. And you're going to be rejoicing, maybe skipping through the living room and shouting and jumping a little bit and clapping your hands and said, God, I asked you this morning to use me and I saw the opportunity and I recognized it and I gave that man a, a meal or, and I put one of those in it and I told him, if, asked him if I could do anything else. Could I even pray with him or her? And I, and I see the joy that came upon them that somebody stopped and actually took time with them. We're going through the book of Job, and I just shared with Vic this past week, we came to the uh, seventh verse, or seventh chapter through the tenth chapter, and I asked Vic, I said, Vic, did you read those in, in advance? He said, yeah, I read, read that, and, and, and I said, let me say something to you as a pastor. I've heard preachers preach uh, in, in a way that they would go through and they would take every verse and break it down and, and go through that and what, what, uh, what is, uh, the friends would say to, to Job or what Job said to them. And, and in the bottom line of all of it, <clears throat> it's like I, I told Vic, I said, it's like the, kind of like the teacher on Charlie Brown, the school teacher, and it goes, moi, 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 moi. He complains, he complains, he complains, and it's, uh, I curse the day that I, I, I shouldn't have ever been born. All the things that go along with it, and those verses through there, and I told Vic, we're not going to read that. It's real. You need to read it. You need to understand and know what I'm talking about. It's not that I don't want anybody to read I want you to read it. But I've read it so many times that I come to that part, and I know it's just filling the air full of those things of complaints. I said, where was the humanitarian part? Where are the Christians today, hallelujah? Where are the ones that stand up to those friends and said, look, time out. 
This man's struggling. He's laying down in his sores or as he lays on the ground and takes a nap or something, he gets up, they're clotted with dirt and everything. Go get some warm soap. Go get some warm water and, and mix it together and put it out there that we might be a humanitarian to that person, that we might reach out, tell them about God's love and show them that there is something within us that's greater than the things of this world and my self-edification. Hallelujah. Lord, help us. Help us in this day. I would want to, they would probably say, oh, he's he probably, I would be out there I, like I told Vic. I said, about every four hours, I would say, I would try to line people up. You know how I am. I would say, every four hours, you ladies, I need, I need something like a sheet or something like that. And, and I need you to bring me those every four hours. Boil them, clean them, do whatever you need to do. But every four hours, bring me a fresh one. I would be taking care of that warm, soapy water and putting it on those sores and helping that person and wrapping them in a clean sheet or something to help them weather that time of trouble. Then saying, man, it really looks rough for you. Where's the church? Hallelujah. And I go through the, all the way up to the 10th chapter of that book and I say, where are the humanitarians? Where are his true friends? Where's the one that would step in there? And then when he does all those others like today, like today, that they would step in there and say, oh, he must think, he must think that uh, Job has some more money somewhere because he was, the, it tells you at the very first part of the book, he was the greatest man in the area, had more animals and had more gold. He had everything, but he lost it all. Even his wife said, curse God and die. And he said, you speak as one of the foolish women. I say to you today, as you do those things of kindness and the humanitarian, the things that God would want you to do, to give you an inroad into them, to minister to them, that don't look at today, set your sights on Jesus, for He is your today, tomorrow, and all of your future, whatever that looks like. He's everything. He's not a part of it. He doesn't fit into the, the parts that you want to give Him. He's your sit on the bench and eat an ice cream, God. He's the one that's with you in the time of need when you're about to go into an accident and you just forgot your keys or couldn't find them and you're two minutes late and everything in front of you now explodes with, a, with an accident that you could have been in. God is looking after you. God is doing great things. Give Him all the glory for that that He's doing. Let Him use you. Let Him be creative within you. He's the God of creation. Let Him be able to say to you, make up those little things. And take them to the pastor. I don't have a printer. Can you print me a bunch of these, pastor? And I say, absolutely. God bless you for what you're doing. Don't wait on me to, for God to give you an idea and me to come confirm it. Move on it when you hear Him. Move on while He is here, while He is moving. And there's coming a time that it says that His presence will not be here. I don't want to be here then. And I believe that we're not going to be here then. But there's going to be a lot of people that's going to say, Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What have I done? I have missed the great opportunity of my life. If you're at home today thinking like that, God's your answer through Christ Jesus. Do not let the world carry you through the cosmopolitan thinking that we're doomed and, and everything is, is dark and bleak and the things they put on TV at whatever event it may be. I say to you today, Andre Crouch, in the words that he penned in the song, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above Him, there is no other Jesus is the way. Then the scripture tells us, seek first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, and He's going to do what? Add all things. Add all things. Whatever you have need of, He's going to add all things unto you. And your little ministry might wind up international, out of love and compassion. I don't know if it's a little bag of just some little hygiene things that you put just some basic immediate emergency stuff in. Might put a pack of chewing gum in there. I don't know what the Lord will tell you. But don't follow my lead, follow His lead and let His Spirit speak to you. That you, as you walk out the prophecies, as you walk out the words of wisdom, 
as you walk out your salvation with fear and trembling, the Bible told us to, uh, to, to do that very thing. That we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Fear and trembling only of God, not of people, not of the circumstances, not of the media, but of what God would say to you. We've all had dreams. Anybody here has never had a dream of some sort? I can remember one time as a kid, I woke up and, and I used to love the cowboy stories. Oh, I, I, I'd get up Saturday morning and, and watch the uh, Ren 10 10 and, and uh, Sky King, and you say, Oh, how old is this guy? And I would watch the, the little rascals, and, and, uh, and I, I loved all, and I'd get up, I'd get up at 6 o'clock on Saturday morning after going to school all week. Mom and Dad would just close the door because I'm in there watching TV. But I love watching those things. But I say to you today that I woke up one morning after having a dream, and I, I don't know, maybe I was four. I don't even think I was in school yet, but I remember how traumatic my dream was. <laughs> I dreamed that the horse died. Trigger. And I woke up with tears in my eyes as a little kid. We've had dreams. You may not talk about them. I don't talk about these things. It's something that I remember. But those things that, that move you, that the God of the heaven would move you today. And as He gives you a dream, and you may share that with someone. And then you may ask them, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny's going to faint when you do. Or, or probably I would also. I don't, I'm not going to tell you my dream. I want you to tell me what the dream was and then interpret it. And Johnny's going to say, oh, my goodness, I've got to quit playing games. I have got to do the Daniel thing and call on God himself in real time or my life is on the line. Are you ready to do that kind of work for God? Are you ready to save yourself and all the other prophets? And then after these things, have them still turn on you. Vic and I talked about some of the things that in life where people have turned on, you, you try to do good, and, and uh, they don't receive it. But just like him, then they, they said, the only way you'll ever trap this guy is to catch him in his prayers and such as that, in his faith. And so he wound up in a lion's den as a result of that. I'm not going to tell you all of that. Go to the book of Daniel. You'll, you'll enjoy the uh, reminder But as you let God work in your life, you not only do something great for yourself, you're helping others. If you make a stand, it's going to cost you sometimes very severely. Even right after that, we know about the Hebrew children. The king, you know, how quickly the king forgot that there's only one God. And then he set himself up as God and had everybody bow down to him. And the Hebrew children said, forget it. <laughs> We're not going to. Well, I'll, I'll heat up the, uh, the furnace seven times hotter than it's ever been, and I'll throw you in it. And I like what the Scriptures had, the one part that it captured that helps me the most and sets me on fire the most. It says, O king, we're not careful in the way we answer you about this matter. We have made the decision and that we're going to serve God, even though we perish in the furnace, even though it costs me my life. I'm willing to go there. And then it winds up that the king gets another revelation. How many revelations have we had? And the king seems to forget again as time goes on. But I say to you that those things that God are, is doing, he, he makes a way. He's always the fourth man in the fire. And that you can not only go through it, but he will bring you out of it without even the smell of smoke on your clothing. To what measure will you let him work? Or do you run in fear? Oh, that guy looks too burly. I can't go over there. Oh, okay. Go home and get your husband or your son or somebody to go with you, and the two of you go back over there. Sometimes we just say, well, I can't do that because of, and then we look at no other option and no other way to do it. And therein lies something I call a lazy Christian. God's not, God's not impressed with our excuse it away. Thank you, Lord. 
How many people today are seeking out palm readers? I've been going down the highway before and through residential areas. What do you see a sign? Palm reader. And I used to ask another one of those times. I asked my dad. I said, Dad, I says, how do you read a palm? And I'm thinking palm tree. I had no idea that what it was. How do you read a palm? And he chuckled. And he said, well, they're not reading a palm tree, son. So the understanding that we need through the power of the Holy Spirit, the more you walk in it, the more powerful you will let him be through you. You'll never be powerful, but he will increase. Paul said, I must decrease that he may increase. Are you all ready for that? Lay more of you down that he would increase within you. Are you ready for that? What is a prophet? It's one whose revelations are divinely inspired and one who foretells of the future. And on the flip side of that is one that when they're finished making that prophetic word of known to people, then time is the answer to whether it was true or not. By the way, it was in 1 Corinthians 14, 5 that Paul said that I wish that everyone spoke in tongues, but it's better to prophesy. And in verses, if you get a chance, read Daniel 26, the second chapter, verse 26 through 49, if you get the opportunity. Let that be something you'll do in your devotions this week, I pray. I know in my life that I've met a lot of people that call themselves prophets, and yet the, on the flip side of who they, they were not a humble person. A prophet should be humble. Always giving God the glory and never receiving it themselves. Always. We can look at Daniel. You say, well, what does that look like? It looks like Daniel. Just read, read the book of Daniel and look at the way he handled himself. If we can see the message in the book of Daniel, how God is revealing to King Nebuchadnezzar that he is the only God, capital H in my thought. <clears throat> but the king kept forgetting. I think sometimes we forget. Let me remind you today that you are a person that can share a future word. I haven't done it in a long time. There was a song that I used to sing. And the title of this message today is that people need the Lord. If I were to come back to it, we need the Lord. And it goes on to say, at the time of broken dreams, He's the open door. Some of the lyrics of that song, I like those lyrics. People need the Lord. You may be out there like the Olympic swimmer said, I don't need anybody or anything. I've, I've got it figured out. I've got it covered. Even the scripture tells us that only the fool says there is no God. Don't walk in an arrogant way. Walk humbly. <clears throat> Let me close today in the book of Acts. After preaching this sermon and sharing with you, you, you might say, well, I'm still not sure what to do. In the book of Acts, second chapter, let me read a few verses for you. Chapter 2, Acts, and let's go to verse 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you <clears throat> by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst. And you yourselves also know. We've heard many sermons. I think most all of us know. 
Him being delivered by the de determined purpose and the foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands and have crucified and put to death. Where are we holding Christ today? Verse 24. Whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, and because it was not possible that he should be held by it. This is a prophetic message being fulfilled in verse 25. For David says concerning him, this is the message, for, it says, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I might not be shaken. Hear those words today. Therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. You need hope today. For you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. He's speaking about Christ. Christ never saw corruption. He was raised from the dead. Verse 28, you have made known to me the ways of life. Do you know those ways today? Jesus says, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him. Last part of verse 28, You will make me full of joy in your presence. Do you come in with the, O oh me, O oh my? It says, You will make me full of joy in your presence. I direct you to His presence that you might know the joy of the Lord. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried and in the tomb with us in this day. Therefore, being a prophet, this is another prophetic message again being fulfilled. At this point, this is the fulfilling of it. And knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on the throne. That's marked as a fulfilled prophetic message. Here's another one. This is an amazing chapter. I'm going into verse 31, and it's another prophetic message being fulfilled. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. Wow, what an event. Wished I could have been there. This Jesus in verse 32 this Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Again, 33, prophecy being fulfilled. Therefore, being exalted into the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. I say to you today, the power within that and Christ and His love and Him going away that He left the comforter for you and I is imperative for us and especially in this day. It says, He poured out this which you know, see, and hear. Another prophetic message, verse 34. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool. Verse 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As it goes on in this passage of Scripture, and it, it, it quickens the heart of those, and as you read the rest of this, I'm not going to go through the rest of it. They said, well, knowing that, and that we were party to, we saw all of this, and we do know that He was resurrected, He was seen afterwards, and all that that we know that's fulfilled in the Scriptures, and the prophecies that were fulfilled. And there's others right over in the next third chapter, prophecies being fulfilled. It was just an outpouring and just a, just a fountain of things being confirmed at Christ's resurrection and His ascending to the Father. And all of those things were a closed door. Now we live in this arena, this time. And we were, uh, it says even from the, uh, those of you that were born in, uh, that you were here in 1948, and the, and the Jewish nation became, uh, they, they became a nation. And it was in 1948 that they became a nation. And because of that, and the Bible tells us that this generation, hello, it's you. You're the generation. It says that this generation 
that saw that take place will not pass away. The coming is soon. Are you ready? Those at home, are you ready? Are you hearing the voice of God in your life? Are you fixing little bags and passing them out with scriptures in them? Are you making the world known with what God says to you and that message that He sends to you and the confirmation of it? What are you doing? When are you going to start? You say, well, I can't do it. Yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you because He loves you. If He gives you the, the need to do these things and He lays it on your heart, He will fulfill you with a strength. You might incorporate some of the younger ones. You might get some of those that don't attend church and might be someone that you can send a letter or note to. Could you come help me pack these bags? Sometimes that's all it takes. Well, they don't go to church regularly. Could you come help me? I need your help. I've got a lot of years on me. Sometimes the arthritis won't let me get up, but I know the Lord told me to do Would you come help me? How many are we taking with us? Go out and win. Rescue from sin. The song says, Lo, sinks the sun. The day is almost done. Go and find them. Help to win them. Save the lost at any cost. The lyrics of a song wrote years ago. Awesome words. I say them to you today. In verse 37 of that second chapter, it says, Men and brethren, what shall we do? You might be asking that question today. That's where it's at. Verse 37, Acts, the second chapter. What shall we do? How can we resolve this problem, this thing that we've done? And in verse 38, Peter said to them, Repent, be baptized, receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Repent, be baptized, and be filled with that power. Do you know that today? Do you know that Jesus, is the, during our service, I heard it over and over. God sent His only Son, and He loves you. He loves you just as you are, and He's ready to work in your life. He's ready to work in my life. It's been a great service today. Thank you all for being willing to, to do things a little bit different as the Spirit prompts today. Let as He speaks to you, you might even, during that service, you might say, you know, that I know we prayed for, for our Brother Perez back there, and, and that, that, that I really feel like that was a great time, and the Lord moved, and He, and he strengthened uh, uh, Miss Lisa there, and such as that, and, and a lot of things I believe that happened during that moment, that prayer, and, and I, I'm just believing to see that back section back there just fill up with His family and friends and neighbors and whoever else God will send into His path. And I believe that your neighborhood and your place right by you can do the same thing. And you might say, you know, that I, we prayed for him, but I want to pray for this other one. The Lord's speaking to me. And I encourage you to listen. Lead. Let the Lord, let the Holy Spirit lead the service. Johnny's not the only one. I'm not the only one. Sue's not the only one. Kim's not the only one. Or well, whoever it may be, or Paul, that, that, that you, would, you would let, the, as Paul said in the Scriptures, that, that he is learning. He said he told those disciples, as they were saying, I'm going to preach to the Gentiles. Oh, don't go over there. You may have to eat the wrong thing. You may have to submit to something. And Paul says, I heard the voice of God I am not afraid of those things that you're speaking of. They don't bother me or concern me because the Lord will make a way. He called me to them. But the other disciples would, would rebuke him about going to the Gentiles. And one of the conclusion things that he said, I believe, ended the conversation. He said, I did not learn these things from men. Let us help each other best we can. But the greatest learning you'll ever do is the power of the Holy Spirit speaking to you. I did not learn these things, Paul said, from men. And it's better to serve God than it is to bow down to your fears. And so Paul moved forward by himself without the other 11. I know that Matthias was voted in as the other 12th uh, uh, a disciple became coming apostles. I guess you could say there was thirteen <laughs> apostles. <clears throat> then you talk about well, the only ones that got filled were those that were the the apostles, the twelve, the disciples, or or maybe Paul got filled. Maybe the Damascus Road was his Holy Spirit experience and being filled and all of that. <clears throat> I'm telling you, there was 120 of them. 
I'm sharing with you the power of God is for you. I'm sharing with you that you're able. You, you can accomplish great things. And then as you walk away, walk away humbly and say, it's not about me. It's all about Him. With a capital H, it's all about Him and looking to God and knowing that you are hearing His voice through the power of the Holy Spirit. Stand with me this morning. I appreciate your time and letting us move in the area this morning that was not scheduled or planned, but I just felt that that's what we needed to do. Sometimes Satan's coming against us. And I see sometimes that I, I say I need to be praying special for that person extra because they, they haven't said anything, but I see the events that are happening around them. That could be detrimental. That could be life-changing. That could pull them away from God. They've got this great offer and a job and whatever and to move into situations. And I remember years ago, I had an offer that said, uh, are you happy with your job? I, I said, well, I hadn't thought about it. And it was an outside contractor. He said, well, I travel. And I go a lot into other countries. We do crane inspections. And we do all these things. My children were small at the time. We go in and, and accidents, and we go in and investigate the accidents. And he said, he said, you would be a great guy for that. He said, six figures a year. He said, you can leave here. I can put you to work next week. He said, he said, we'll get you fixed up. And I said, you know, I would have to know a whole lot about it. And I said, just answer one question. <clears throat> How long would I be out of town? He said, you'd be out of town three weeks at a time, possibly four. And then you would be home for a week, sometimes two weeks, but not always. So you would be 24-7 up to 30 days. And I said, my children are small. I can't do that. But you'll be making six figures. What's the world saying to you? I'm glad somebody was praying for me that I could go through the things that I did. It's not that I couldn't have made more money. I gave some of those offers up for the things that I felt was like Martha and Mary. I tried to go after the better things. I did the things that I thought were the best. And that's what you will do. You will be made some offers by the world, but sometimes God's got you in a, on a track. And you say, oh, look, and you're being pulled over here. And you go a different way. You see all the, the financial benefits. I say to you today that following Christ will bring you the greatest riches and the greatest glory of anything you'll ever do. If He's in it and He's taking you there, then I encourage you to move forward. If it's something that the world's encouraging you to and, and trying to entice you, I say think about it real hard and let God lead you. What voice are you hearing? What offers are you receiving? Where are you walking? It'll cost you something probably to follow Christ. It always has. But I've always said that it was worth it. It's worth it today. The song says, wealthy fellow, my father owns the heavens. My father owns all the earth. I'm his child. I'm his heir. I just don't know how much I'm worth. Look at the fertile green valley. Look at the big oak tree. I'm a mighty, mighty wealthy fellow. They all belong to me. Heavenly Father, I come to you now at the close of this service. I thank you for your people that are assembled here that would take the time and, and drive and be here in church with us to assemble together, Lord, in these days in which we live. I thank you for them. Lord, there's those that couldn't be here because of circumstances and things in their lives. I pray that you heal and minister to every one of them today. Lord, those that are in our hearts and those that even have moved away recently in distant times, Lord, and they're not here close by anymore, be with them as they watch the service and, and let them minister right where they are in Jesus' name. Yes. I thank you now, Lord, for each of us here and those that are on Facebook, those that will be on YouTube later, that they would follow, Lord, you and not our service. And I wish that there was a place up there that we could just say, it's a, a, most of these uh, uh, 
businesses or whatever they may, may be or these that are making videos that says, would you like to follow? And they have a button there. Lord, I wish that everybody would push the follow God button. I wish they all would and follow and listen to your word, listen to your advice, listen to your comments, and that they would all follow you. Yes. Lord, it's our desire today to be like Jesus. We ask that you lead us by your spirit. Forgive us of all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for the strength you've brought to those as we prayed and agreed together today. And I ask for those that are at home that I don't know about, Lord, that you minister to them right now. They're sitting there saying, if you only knew, Lord, you already know. Touch them now in Jesus' name. Thank you for your kindness and your mercy and your grace. We stand before you, Lord. We repent. We'll baptize those that you send. And we pray that they all would be filled with the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your church. Thank you for letting us be a part of your end time. Use us now in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. If you would like prayer this morning, you're welcome to come up. And just know that the Lord will meet your need. We, I think we've gone through a lot this morning, and, and I think God's already done a lot of that. But if you need something, I want, I want to make that uh, offer and open that door. I don't want to close the door and say, I wish they had of an...